was large enough that it was divided into two classrooms, one section over here, the classroom over here. It came time for final examinations. This class over here had math class in the morning, just before lunch. This class next door didn't have math until the afternoon, after lunch. As it so happened, somebody in this class made a copy of that math test, all the problems that were on the final exam. I, I, don't, want to, I don't want to make accusations here. Bandy about names recklessly, but the names Leslie Dial and Jerry Mitchell. <laughs> That's not important. <laughs> that, that's not important at all. The main thing is, they got the, the math problems and they gave it to this class over here. <laughs> this class, of course, took those math problems and got the best math students in this class to work those problems. No. They were all girls, of course. <laughs> Where does this crap come from? You hear about the fat boys are supposed to be great in math and girls are not? Was it so in our time? <laughs> All the best students were girls. Now you have to understand at this time that the best students in the class were exempt from taking the final, final exam. They, they didn't have to take this final exam. But here they were, and they spent their lunch hour working these math problems taking a test they didn't have to take. So, some of us who were more numerically challenged might have a better chance. <laughs> Again, I don't want to mention any names. Sue Archer comes to mind, one of those people. But there are, I think, several girls in this room who might recall that. They worked through the lunch hour, solved these math problems. And of course, we had the math test, and we got through it. Now this is where the story gets a little sticky. <laughs> Those of you who are philosophical or you read crime novels, you can see some problems here about this whole thing. Questions that need to be answered. Why is it that this class would run all the risk giving a test to this class and they get none of the benefit? This class, on the other hand, runs no risk, and gets all the benefit. Why did they do that? And these girls who work these math problems, why do they spend their lunch hour taking a test that they don't even have to take just to help somebody else? Now, I've pondered this question over the years, and I really have not come up with a suitable answer. There are two, of course, two answers that come to mind. The first being, we were kids. And kids do stupid things. That's the easiest. The only other answer I can give you is <coughs> that's the way we were. That's the way we were. You see, we were willing to do things for each other. These people didn't have to do this. They didn't have to help this class out. Nobody asked them to do that. They <coughs> volunteered to help somebody over here. Now I ask you, where can you find friends like that today? <laughs> somebody who will do something for nothing without getting anything in return. Somebody who will do something without being asked. That's the way <coughs> we Little Linda Vandenberg, as we used to call it back in the third <coughs> Then we're going to do a book for this reunion. And we're going to have everybody in it and all their biographies. And we're going to have pictures of then and now. And somebody can say, hey, Linda, why are you doing this? <laughs> you can realize how much work there is. You can imagine what her house was like. <laughs> Stacks of paper. Stacks of those biographies that she's been bugging you that you sent to pictures all over the place. I don't even want to mention him. He's not here, by the way. He may be cleaning a house. But you have to ask, why? 
Does she do this to benefit you and me? Because 